FixEasy.com bringing you another repair video today on an Apple iPod Touch 5th Gen. In today's video, we're going to show you the steps necessary to remove and replace the display assembly on your iPod. Before we get started with our disassemble, let's review our suggested tools. Small Phillips screwdriver, fine-tipped curved tweezers, a spudger, plastic opening tools, precision knife set. So taking a look at our iPod Touch 5th Gen here, you're gonna notice the obvious cracks in the display assembly. Let's go ahead and work on peeling up this display so we can replace it with a part from FixEasy.com and make it good as new. Let's begin our entry into the iPod here with our precision knife kit with the squared off tip. We can use that to get between the display assembly and the base of the iPod to begin that separation. Once you've peeled up enough separation to fit a plastic opening tool, we can continue around the perimeter of the display with the plastic opening tool. As we separate the display completely from the base of the iPod. With the broken display assembly completely peeled back from the iPod, it's going to reveal a metal protective plate that's covering up the motherboard. There's a total of 12 Phillips screws that need to be removed from this protective plate before removal. And before peeling up that plate, let's be sure to address the home button down near the bottom of the iPod. Let's peel it away from its securing adhesive. And when we lift the protective plate out, that we fish the ribbon cable through accordingly. Let's take a look at our replacement part here for reference to recognize which cables that are gonna be used for our display assembly. To make things easier, during the end of our disassemble, we're going to go ahead and cut the ribbon cables for both the LCD and the touchscreen digitizer so that we can remove the broken display assembly out of our way. Let's work now towards lifting our motherboard so we can completely remove the connections for our display assembly. Let's start with the three Phillips screws that are securing the motherboard itself. Additionally, we have three more Phillips screws here in the top corner holding down this antenna. And with our screws removed, we can now use our spudger and get under this battery here and begin to peel it up. As it is one piece and fully connected to the motherboard, so when lifting up the motherboard from the base of the iPod, you're going to recognize that both of the connections for the display assembly are on the bottom side of this motherboard. With it slightly peeled up, we can use our tweezers here to disconnect both connections, first for the touchscreen. second one here for the LCD. Okay, let's go ahead and work on our reassembly here. We can gently peel back our motherboard ever so slightly to reveal a small, thin ribbon wire that we can go ahead and release here with our tweezers. Releasing that ribbon wire will allow the motherboard to flip all the way over from the base of the iPod and allow us full access to both plugs for the digitizer and the LCD. When we bring in our replacement part, it's going to make it far easier to connect these two connections 
and only have to worry about connecting the small thin ribbon wire back to the motherboard when you flip it back into the base of the iPod. Now before installing our new display assembly, let's not forget to transplant our home button from our original broken display assembly onto our new replacement part. With our home button securely in place, we can now maneuver the new display assembly over to our motherboard and we can wrap our ribbon cable connections around the bottom side of the motherboard and firmly secure their connections. First one here for the LCD and then the second one here for the touchscreen digitizer. With our display assembly connections now firmly in place, we can bring the motherboard closer to the base of the iPod and now worry about our final small thin ribbon cable connection that needs to be on the bottom of the motherboard. With all of our ribbon wires secured, we can now flip the motherboard back into the base of the iPod and set it up for mounting. Align the mounting holes for the three Phillips screws to secure the motherboard down in place. We have an additional three screws here in the top corner to secure our antenna. Check on the battery to make sure it feels secure in its adhesive. Let's now bring in the metal protective plate over top of our motherboard and battery. Let's not forget to fish through the ribbon cable for the home button towards the bottom of the iPod before securing it with the 12 Phillips screws. With all of our screws in, we can now line up our front-facing camera to our new display assembly. And we can bring it down to the base of our iPod. Pushing firmly and evenly around the new display assembly until it clips down into the base of the iPod. With our new display assembly flush around the entire unit, we can power it on to check for full functionality. And there you have it. Another successful repair by FixEasy.com. All of the parts and tools you've seen today in this video are available at www.FixEasy.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter.